Hi guys, welcome to another edition of The Big Shift. I have an unbelievable guest today. It has some unbelievable, iconic, historic mafia content from back in the days. You know, I'm talking Albert, Albert Anastasia, uh, Frank, Frank Costello, uh, the Gallo brothers. Hi Frank, thanks for coming on The Big Shift. How you doing, Steph? Thank you so much, man. One thing you certainly see about, about their life that I don't think people really get, they may start to get a bit more, is the accountability, Frank. It's, you know, the accountability within, within, within the life, you know, to main men, what they do, who they do, what they do, every, the structure of it, right? But look, let's go to um, Albert, talk about Albert. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, Albert there, the man, they used to call him, Anastasia, right? Yeah. So, Tell us about him as a person, Frank. What is your what was your understanding or your experience of the man as a person? He got he got killed when I was a baby. But, but, but we have my uncle Joe Chapani was 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 with you. Um now uh, Anastasia and uh, Joe Adonis and uh Frank Costello and uh Lucky Luciano. And Joe Shep was really, really close. He wound up being lived very old. And dying, he was the head of all the unions. He took all the uh, Frank Costello gave him all the power with the union and stuff like that. Uncle Joe said that uh, Albert, which he was with Albert a lot, said that Albert was a really, really, really mean guy. He was not pleasant at all. There was no times at all that he was this guy was pleasant. He says uh, he's an old school gangster, and he did a lot of things he didn't supposed to do. You know, uh, big argument with one after a civilian guy. Got killed, killed the guy. He says that he wasn't well liked. He was feared, but he wasn't well liked. So mm-hmm. uh, when he got whacked, you know, in 57, whatever it was, and no one cried. So uh, 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 he, and he also said that uh, he told me that uh, that uh, Albert's the one that whacked uh, uh, his boss. He said that um, that uh, Albert Anastasia. I met up with um, what's his name? What's his name? Vincent Magano. I think Magano. I forgot from film. We wanted a Vincent with film, and got a meet for me in, in Red Hook, and that uh, uh, Alba killed him, and they they put him out to sea. And that's what happened to Magano. So he was a treachery. Was always there. He wasn't well liked, but feared tremendously feared. You know what I mean? But uh, that's what Joe said about him. This is a man that was with him, so I would take his word for him. Joe said, Joe, Joe, uh, Joe Shepard was very, very, very well uh, respected. He's a Genovese mate in the Genovese family, and he was well respected from, from everybody, from all five families. So, if Joe would make a statement like that, you know, you would tend to believe him. Um, he, he was killed in the Sheraton, running, you know, in the barbers getting his head done, right? Yes. And, um, you know, he had his, you know, he had his guys outside, his bodyguards or whatever was out there that day, uh, Frank. So, you know, the double cross was in, you know, yeah. they knew it was coming. They let them go straight through, right, and all that stuff. What transpired just before before that event? Have you any knowledge or anything that was said about why, what, you know, I mean, there's sure he had a lot of enemies, right? You know, this is alive, but actually... What was what was the thing that led to the events of him being killed that day in the Sheraton Hotel? Vito Genovese and, and the Carlo Cabino got together. Vito wasn't crazy about uh, um, Albert because Albert was friends with uh, Costello and, and uh, Lucky, and they they pulled off a coup. Cool. Mm. They pulled it all the time. They've done it ten times before that. They want to put, they want the, we don't want him out. And they put the uh, Carlo Campino in there. Don't forget, Carlo Campino is the underboss of, of, of the family. So they get to everybody. I mean, you get the underboss to get to the, to the uh, bodyguards. It's very easy. You know, you come walk, you're dead. You know, these guys don't have the love. They're going to walk. You know what I mean? Nobody, uh, you know, if you walk into bullets, what happens quickly, you know, you, you do it. When you got time to think about it, you, you start thinking about it, you know, and, and you make a different decision. So that's, they walked away, and, and then 
So the guys went in there and killed them. Absolutely. And um, you knew a lot about the Colombo War as well, right? Well, yeah, I was in the middle of the Colombo War. That's what that's what I where I was involved with, yeah. Did you know, you know, you must have knew some of them old time guys like Sonny, Sonny Francis and all them. Did you know them? Sonny Francis was a very good friend of my father's. He was through the war, after the war, and uh, and um, until he died. You, you gotta understand that these guys were all friends. Some guys didn't like each other, just like naturally. With them. Some guys just don't like each other in the same crew, in the same family. A lot of guys don't love each other. There are a lot of bullshit artists. They have to like somebody more, mm. you know, you know up, above them in some way, and you have to, you know, be nice to them. But a lot of people don't like each other. In, 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 when this Gallo Pafacci uh, uh, Gallo Colombo war, these guys were dealing with each other from 63 or 61, whatever it is. They've been dealing. They stopped dealing with each other during the, the Pafacci war because they were both shooting each other. Then right after it was over, they, had, they were doing business again together again. They were drinking the same bars again. They were doing the same uh, scores together. I mean, some of them. So when the when the shit hit the fan again, in uh, when Joey when Joey Colombo got shot, it, that's another headache again now because you got guys intermingling with each other. It's the same family. You know? So you know a structure of a family is not that there was one family and another family. It's the same family. There's a different crew in the same family. So it really gets gets hard to figure it out. Who's with who? We got numbers together. We got clubs together. We got right. pictures together. This is together, yeah. together. The money together, yeah. Now you start shooting each other. Maybe I don't want to shoot you, but I, I'm with this guy. I'm with my skipper. So it gets really, really complicated. You know? And... and you usually go after the guys that you can get to, no matter whom it is. Once you go to you know war with each other, you're gonna go who who you can grab, you know. And, and that's what winds up happening, you know. And uh, during the first, uh, the second, the the Columbo war, you know, a lot of guys got uh, uh, killed or shot in, in between, you know. But that didn't last long, you know. That was only about a year or two, you know, a year, about a year. What happened was that after that happened, after Joey got, Joey got killed in '72, uh, guys came down to 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 put a stop to that, you know, from the Genovese and from the other families to try to to uh, what do you call it, um, to make peace. So but nobody wanted the bloodshed. So they came down and they put like a a, a, a cap on. Um, some the guys got passes and. Some guys uh, walked on that. But a year, but a year later, the gals had it. In, the, their biggest argument was amongst themselves. In '73, uh, they had a breakup in the family, in the, in the crew, and about ten guys pulled away, and they went back to the Columbus. And that's where, from '73 to '76, is where the, uh, the last. Uh, competition was that's when everybody started shooting each other. That's why, like, when Stevie Cirello got killed, and Punchy, uh, Frank Liliano got shot, and the Syrian got shot, Stevie, Bo Stevie Borriello got shot, a few other guys got killed. That all happened from, from a breakup in the crew and until eventually the Gallos got released from the, uh, the Colombos because it was such a fucking headache to them. <laughs> they released them. And they went with the Genovese family and the Gallows Mall. By 76, 77, it was, that's all, you in the history books at by 77, because now it's all over. Yeah. So during that, during that, during that time, that war, Frank, how old was you then? You know, you know, we're going on a bit I was, now. I was, how old I, was, was you? I was right in the middle of that. I got shot at. I was running guns. I was running money. I was bringing whatever you can do at, 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 at that point. Some things I, I can't say, you know, what I did because you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just right. Okay, look. I was right in the belt. I was right in the middle of that. That was uh, I was the uh, seventeen, eighteen, then, you know, what was you know, you're right, the picking then, you know what I mean? So uh 
Yeah, I was, you know, we, I ran a lot of guns around because guys were hiding out and I would know where they are. They were sending, you know, they were sending, don't forget, it. The, the police were on President Street, the barrack, or the police barrack, the barricade. We, we couldn't get off, you know, not on or off the block without yeah, telling, telling a police officer or detective where we were going. So it was very hard to move things around. Money, where you're going, you used to follow, uh, especially guns. Guys needed guns, I mean, so it, it, would, it, would, it would be a big, big game. I would, I, I would, <laughs> I would go out drinking, make them go out drinking, pick my girlfriend up, and, 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 and like a big farce. I would go out drinking all night, playing games, going out, uh, going for dinners, going like that, just to get out. So you leave me alone, and I follow us here for a while. They say, oh, he's young, he, but they're going out drinking. They're about discontented. And then when they leave, we want to leave, so I can want to go get a gun to bring it to someone. We had to go to hell to, to, to move guns around because we were, they were watching us. Uh, you know, guys want the lamb. You know, who is trust to get them? But needs money. But needs food. You know what I mean? So it, it, was, a, it was a game we played with the law. And, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy. But, you know, but, but being young, you know, and the law, after a while, would, would think that, you, you, know, you know, we're just going out having a good night with your girlfriend, you know? And they will leave you alone after, after six hours, you know? And then you go do what you got to do. So it, it was a game that had to be done. You know, we played it, you know, uh, and stuff like that. You know, when you're locked down on the block, people shooting at you and, and uh, can't move around too good, the money still has to be made. There's, there's pickups to be made. There's, you know, shot money to have you dropped off. There's ribbons, you know, the world don't stop, you know. So you have to uh, go out to do what, it. Um, what? Yeah, that would have been a difficult time. You know, I see that. <laughs> Unbelievable, especially where they're locking everything down and must have been a... Uh, yeah, you can't earn it. That's the problem. You can't earn it. I mean, you can sit on the block and drink and have fun, bring the girls down, but you got to eat. you got to make money. And, and that's what, what the hardest thing was to do, was to make money. Yeah. You know? Let me cool. ask you, let me ask you, Frank. Look, you know, I mean, since, you know, Rico and... You know, all the bosses of the five families, they got indicted and, you know, all that stuff went on, you know, all that history. There's been a lot of changes, you know, you know, to the uh, to the New York La Costa Nostra families, right? It's well documented. But look, I want to ask you one of them older guys, right? I mean, it's obviously changed now so much. Well, what do you think about how it was back then and what you see today, Frank, really? What I read today, because you know I'm not around nobody, you know. But what I read today. What you read today, yeah. Sorry, you know what you what you what you get today, what you kind of read, what you whole, understand about it today. A whole different game, you know. These guys, you know, they weren't brought up with the the old school gangsters to give them the, you know, the rules and regulations or the, uh, you know, the the oath to to be what we, what we uh, want to be. Uh, you got they have so much. Uh, Technology against them. Um, the laws are built, to, to, you know, to bring them down. Uh, they don't have the smarts to avoid it. You see, they always get themselves in trouble with their mouths and phone and cell phones. I mean, we've been saying for years, they all off the phone. They all off the phone. To their phone. They're, they're threatening somebody on the phone again. Either they're stupid or they have bad memory or, or they don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They go to jail. That's why I laugh. I laugh when they all go to jail because... My father used to say, the smart ones stay out of jail. To go rob something and get caught, you're an asshole. you got to rob something and not get caught. You know what I mean? So, you know, I go to jail, I don't care. But well, you're stupid. That's not what we're here for. You know? But it's just a different, Rico killed them. Uh, they make guys different now for different reasons. Uh, when I was a young guy, I never heard nobody a rat. I never heard nobody was a rat. I saw World Peel. I saw, don't forget, I was around guys like, you know, you know, Fat Tony, Funza uh, uh, the Chin, you know. Uh, those guys were, you know, old school guys, real old school guys that you don't even say that fucking word in front of them. These guys, uh, that's all they do is pull each other rats and rat at each other. And there's been you know, 4,000 guys in the last 30 years. I mean, prior to that, there were maybe two. It was, you know, that's just Oracle. I mean, it's a whole new world, you know. I've been out of it so long because of rats and stuff like that, because we were with 
with the uh, Anthony Rotunda with the Jersey crew at the end, and they all and they all went bad. Everybody flipped, and everybody um, became performance, and everybody uh, ratted on each other, and we walked away. But that was it after that. After that treachery, and how a boss of the family that we were involved with, you know, was you know flipped so easily. Uh, that was it. We washed our hands of this. The mass was going to want to become a street criminal yourself. Forget about being with anybody. So the question is, from what your understanding, what you read or what, you know, when you've kind of been in that life, even though you transform your life and you're so much out of it, you know, you still have a depth, you, you know, you can see stuff, you understand stuff in a different way, you look at stuff, right? You know, so, you know, for you, you know, for you, I mean, is, is the mafia still there, you know, in that way? Is it underground? You know, I mean, I don't expect you to, but... You know, people have said it's still there, but it's all different now. You know, we don't kill anyone anymore, you know, because there's a, you know, a moratorium on killing and all this stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, look, business is business, Frank. You know, you know that. Business has to be done just the way everyone does business to survive. I mean, it's as easy as that, right? Business progresses. It has to prosper. I mean, I have to say, when the, when the killing is taken out of it and the violence this is much better. You know, obviously, this is much better. Of course. You know, I mean, the feuds is another thing, right? We, 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 you can't solve them with some guys. This is a problem, right? You know what it was like when you are in that life. Exactly. You know, it's do or die, right? You have to change with the times. It's, of course they're still there, man. There's criminals, there's yeah. criminals everywhere. There's criminals, there's Albanians, they're Russians, they're Chinese, they're black. They're, you know, I mean, we don't got the, the only guys around. You know, we're just the most popular guys I mean, that they write about and, and that we're just more flamboyant. It just, it's just different breed of guys are coming up. You know, they do different things. You know, they're more underground. They're more, they're more tech, tech-wise. You know, uh, they had to change with the times. You know, yeah. they're not as flashy as we were. We took our money and bought diamonds and put, and put three-piece suits on with alligator shoes and we went out drinking and, and flashed what we did. You know, we were flashy clubs, you know, you know, and stuff like that. We hung out together more. We went, you know, uh, it was flashy times. That's what we did. Uh, now, you know, they're barbecuing in the backyard, you know, in short shorts, and they're a little low-key because the law's all over them, you know? We got cameras everywhere, man. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a different... They're at a, they're at a, you know, uh, what do you call it, um, a disadvantage now. So, you know, to, are they, I think they're different to us. Do I think they're as tough as us? I don't know. Anybody can kill anybody. You know what I mean? I, I know, I know, I know. It's a tough people. world. It doesn't matter. It's a tough I know world. guy yeah. killed a good friend of mine because he was scared of him and, and popped him. And the guy was big as, as, a, as a football player and killed him in two seconds. Cause, only because he was afraid of him and, and he killed him. He was 15, 16, he was skinny as a what? Fierce. So anybody can kill anybody. Um, it's just a different philosophy now. Uh, to, uh, you know, you know. Once I started writing, once I started with the magazine, you know, I, I, I walked out of the life completely because you can't do both. Because it looks bad. And I have some friends. I do have a few friends now that we, we talk, but we don't like to go out no more because I mean I've been doing this so long. Everybody knows who I am. Uh, it looks bad. Let's like tell stories or something like that. So you know, you don't stay with your friend because you know no more. But I do. You know, get the scuttlebutt what's going on now and then. And different breed and you know, different problems than we had. And they're trying to overcome it. And uh, it, it will go on. So, Frank, let me ask you, you know, I know what it's like to live so many years around this kind of stuff, prison and, you know, and all of this kind of stuff, right? The violence and all that. Um, what made you leave the life, Frank? We left the life because in 1999, you know, I was I was supposed to be made in 1999 by three of us. We were made in the, the Jersey family. And uh, my father sat down and grabbed me and told me that uh, you, me and a couple of, not going to mention names, are being got proposed to be made in the Kikantante family in Jersey. I said, okay. He said to me, you know that you get straightened out, then you fuck up. You go, you know, I'm the one that's going to kill you. It leaned over, 
and grab my hand and goes, you know what I'm saying? And I said, okay, I'll make sure I don't do no mohawk. And about a month later, uh, our skipper, who we were with, and the crew, Anthony the Thunder, wound up getting arrested with 10, 20 other guys, all the higher guys in Jersey, the boss, on the boys, all the skippers, because they all gets arrested. And what happened was, our guy, Anthony Rotundo, was in jail for a year. And what happened after a year, probably word comes out, we get word that he, they took him out of circulation. Once we took him out of circulation, we know he flipped. So now, our skipper flipped. We didn't know that this was the boss of the family skip, uh, uh, flipped. In the oceans, he flipped. So now, he flipped, the boss flipped, the underboss flipped, Another skipper flip, and there's two guys in, 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 the, in the crew that were shooters that did, did some murders. They flip. So now everybody's in trouble. So what happened was we were part of the Brooklyn crew and that Jersey family. So a lot of guys not too familiar with us because we were Anthony Thunder in that crew. Uh, at that time, a couple of old guys passed away too. So when uh, Anthony wound up coming going into witness protection program, that crew scattered. Who went to Jersey? Who went try to get released to go somewhere else? And who just sat there back? So my father turned around, Ricky turned around and says, you don't do nothing until they call. We get no calls. No one can call. No one called because number one, everyone was afraid to ride on each other. This guy, the guys in Georgia didn't know us that well. They wanted to call us in. They didn't know how the hell we were, personally. So they didn't call us in, ask us nothing. They don't want to open themselves up. So they just we just walked away. So Ricky turned around and said, I'm done with all these rats. It's a big case. We still got to worry about if if Anthony flips and gives us up on a few things, you know what I mean, uh, that he could have given us up on. But he goes, we have to sit and wait for that. So he goes, that's it. We're done. He packed up. We went to Florida. And he said, that's it. Don't take no calls. And that's how we walked away. And that was 2001. That was pretty much our way. And no one called. <laughs> I should have mentioned they did. But look, you know, I mean, uh, life, life, life is a progression, you know. And it's, it's a, uh, sometimes something you didn't thought, you know, can happen. You know, can really happen, you know. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think now, looking back, Frank? You know, is it the best thing that happens to you leaving this life that you've known all them years or not? I, 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 I yeah, just out of common sense, had to be the best thing, you know. Uh, do you miss certain things? Yeah, I mean, of course, you miss a lot of things. I miss a, a, a lot of things, but so, yes, yeah, the best thing that happens to you. I wouldn't recommend it for life, no one, you know what I mean? Especially, you know, after so many years and, and uh, got grandchildren and, and stuff like that. No, I don't recommend it. It's, it's not good. It's not good. It never ends up. It very rarely ends, ends well. Uh, I can, we ended well because we just wanted lucky ones. You know what I mean? But there's thousands that don't, that uh, wind up in jail or wind up there. So, yes, you know, to, you know, it's like living two different lives. The first life is in, in, in the limelight, being involved with Joey and all that stuff, which is a trip and a half. And then the second part of your life, you got to live like a fuck, like a common person. It's a whole different world. Now you you're from here down down here. You know what I mean? It's like your mind, you know. If you remember, yeah. and then and then you got to live. Like it's a, different. It's different worlds, Frank. You know. I mean, look. You know, I had a very traumatic time when I was a kid. I all of them years I was involved. Uh, you know, in all the organized crime stuff. You know, the guys over in my family who I was around and, you know, it wasn't your stuff, but it was very serious. The same kind of same kind of dynamics. I went to prison, 17 years, our security, shooting at police, armed robbery, um, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Come out. Um, you know, the truth is for me, I wanted out of that life for a long time. You know, when I was in there, I mean, I'd done 12 years in one, in one straight through. I mean, I was horrendous, right? That's you awesome. know, I wanted out of that life for a long time and, you know, it is what it is. I never done no harm to no one. I played by the rules. I done my share. I done uh, ten people's share. That was just my story, you know, uh, uh, Frank. I come out of it. I went on. I've, uh, you know, and I've worked. And I, I'm 
It was a part of my life, Frank. I'm happy I'm away from all that. The truth is it never, it never worked for me, Frank. What yeah. I do now, I have a wonderful life. When yeah. I was stuck in that, yeah. I, was, I was always cornered. You know, it was always bad news. Yeah. But down the road was always a dark day, even though, even, even though yeah, you know, there was good times, you what? know, and some glamour and all that stuff. But really, it wasn't paying off, Frank. That's the truth, right? You know, it wasn't oh, paying you off. Pay for it. Well, <laughs> that's my experience, right? You know, I have to say that I have to put it out there because it's the truth. You know, pe people can make of it what they will. You know, that's their, yeah. that's their, that's their, that's their prerogative. You know, um, so how how do you find the neighbourhood today? Uh, what you do today? Tell us about what you do today. You know, I know you do a lot of other stuff and. What do you do today, Frank? We've always been in the, in the publishing distributing business. So uh, in 2007, I started that Mark Kenny magazine with a, with a friend of mine, Tyrone or Christopher. It did well, you know. Uh, so we, we, I've been doing that for the last, uh, I did that from 2007 to, to, to uh, 2013 and something like that. And then 2014, I started writing. You know, and in the last five years, I've been writing books. So that's what I do. I, either, I mean, I come out with a magazine anytime I want. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's all there. You know, I just got to print it. You know what I mean? Just waiting for a good time to do so. This, this, this wasn't a good time, you know, the last year and a half with the, with the uh, pandemic. But uh, I'm, another magazine is coming out. I just write, man. I write, you know, uh, and I just relax. You know, you know I just sitting around having yeah. cars and you know I don't work no more so mm. I pretty much retired so I just sit around and you know yeah I wrote the script for the uh for the Pleasant Street Boys I got the script about the Joey Gal I got the script and you know I try to send it out here and there and try to get some some bikes on it but you know so far no bikes you know and I'm not the one I'm not the type of guy to, to go up everybody's ass and pushy and you know I'm not gonna do that. I send it you like it you like it, you don't like it and you know it goes yeah, back yeah, and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should be the way. <laughs> I want to ask you, yeah, I'll get that. I really do, Frank. Look, I, I want to ask you one more question about the old days because this is coming there. And I, I look, you know, I mean, I try and get different slants on this from different guys as well. So I ask the same question because it's a pivotal question in mob history is that look, uh, John Gotti, right? You know, on the front of Time magazine and all, we all know the story and all that. With, with Sammy, right? Sammy, Sammy Gravano. Now, look, do you, a lot of people are saying, and there's different slants on this, as I said, do you think that, because there's always been flamboyant gangsters, even in the old school, they was different, but you still had the flam, flamboyant types, Frank, right? Yeah. So do you think it's fair to say when they say about John, now they say, they jump on the bandwagon and they say, Oh, you know, he was on the front of Time magazine, which I get, I get, right? You know, it's not helpful, right? Let's be honest. He was the beginning of the end. Really, it was him. He was the catalyst of all of that stuff, you know, and then Sammy Gravano, what transpired after that, where it was the beginning of the end for the New York mob. What's your view on that? Well, I don't think it, I don't think it ended. So, beginning of what end? I mean, well, it, that... It's been it's been a, it's been twenty years and he's still get hoodlums are getting arrested every day. Yeah, 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 yeah Wasn't no. getting arrested. That period, period. that period, ah. though. That nah. period, maybe. Nah. Was he too flamboyant and did he bring too much attention to himself? Yes, he did. The guy was an egotistical guy. I mean, you you're not dealing. These guys are gangsters. I tell you a hundred. I tell everybody a hundred times. You're not dealing with normal people that have nine to five jobs that pet their dog. These guys are they have to maniacs, man. They kill people. How do you how you Rational, you say, well, John did it. You know, this is one gangster that's a, that's a psychopath like the rest of us uh, at one point. And then you want to then you want to say that oh, he did this wrong, he did that wrong. Yeah, they're nuts. They're, they're killers. They're nuts. You want to rationalize what, what nuts do? This guy was a flamboyant one. Did it did it destroy him? It destroyed him. But that was his choice. You know what I mean? You, you can't. But no, no one told John that he demanded he demanded. You know, respect. He demanded everybody come in. He had hundreds of captains. He, they came in and, and didn't say nothing then. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, being other people's shoes, they have to, you know, to be to, to talk about it later. You've got to be in their shoes. You know what I mean? 
these guys are psychopaths, man. You know, you're not, you know, it's, they're not regular people. So when outsiders or people that, you know, love to read stuff, try to, you know, they make statements of, oh, he, 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 he brought down a map. Rationalize it. Rationalize something that can't be rationalized. Exactly. Then you want to give up There's no rules. You're not there. You're not there. You don't know why. Like, Sam, like Sammy, they could, Sammy's a rat. Yes, Sammy did rat. He did it, man. But we're not in his shoes. You don't know why his passions were. You know, because, you know, these guys, you know, these gangsters and people, as much as I love you, I'm going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? That's how this shit works, man. So when it, when it, Sammy could have got, you know, we don't know what John said to Sammy. Mm. We don't know what was said between them. That's what you got to go in his shoes. You, these guys are psychopaths. He could have said one word he didn't like, and you switch. Now, from loving you, I'm going to kill you. Yes, it is. That's how it works. You that's know, the that's reality. The, that's the reality of it. Uh, both of us know that. You know, when you're dealing with the, you know, that and kind of the Bible of fitness, that kind of end. You know, look, a lot of guys don't want to go to jail. It's the Bible of fitness. Like that gets people get scorned, and you know, it's like everything else. You know, I, you know, I don't, I don't particularly care for people that flip. I don't particularly care for you know, for the, but I don't badmouth them, and I don't talk about it because you got to be in their shoes. Everyone's different. Until you get in their shoes, you don't know. Especially when there's different circumstances around. You know, I mean, if, if you get caught with something and you just wanna you don't want to go to jail, then you're an ass and then you're a bad person. But when people do things to you, like you just changes you know, the you dynamic, know, don't it, Frank? You know, yeah. they were different, it can change the whole thing. It's all other people to say, yeah. you know, don't know anything. You know, this is a fascinating part. You know, I mean, I yeah. told you my part, what I done, you know, when I was in there, how I took my choices. But you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying exactly. that was the path that I took. As I, that was the path I came to. I was yeah. happy to be out of life. So there yeah. are a lot of different things going on here. So, th thanks for that because you know, there's a a lot of changes now. You know, there's a lot of guys. I talk to a lot of guys. Definitely. You know, I don't judge anyone, Frank. I mean, who the fuck am I to judge no one? One thing I don't judge is anyone. Maybe they judge me. I mean, exactly. I'm not a fucking judge, right? Do you understand? I, I don't well, care about them, so it matter. Yeah. No, but I hear their stories, Frank. Yeah. I hear their stories. I like some, you know, I like some of them. I do. Yeah, yeah. they're interesting. I do. You know, you know, they have, um, you know, they've had unbelievable journeys and they, you know, they tell me their story, you know, and I, I, I get many parts of it. I really do because I'm not fucking stupid. I'm not thick, okay. right? Exactly. So, I know. I met. I met story. Sammy. I met Sammy the Bull a few times. You guys, no joke. You know, guy was no joke. You know what I mean? So now, you know, you talk about you pulling things like that. I, I would just keep your, your, your you know, his, his name out of your mouth. You're not in his shoes. But it's you know, but it's good entertainment. It's good reading. You know, but uh, I just stay away from it. And uh, that's it. That's why most of the stuff I write, they're dead people. Yeah. Or they, or they died already. And, Frank, look, you know, I'm not saying I condone that. I mean, if someone's a bad person, they put their name to something with their friends, they're all into together, and they turn and just glance on them. Yeah. He's, he's a wronging in my book. There's no way out of that, right? Yes. You know, i never done this. And I took, you know, I, I lost everything not to fucking do this. Exactly. That's my choice. That's what I'm saying. But look, you know, it is what it is. And um, it's good we have a, you know, a chat about that. Because there's yep. so much that comes out at the moment. And I think one of the things, one of the things that is annoying is people are so quick to talk about something they have no idea of. Not even, no a, idea. Not even a little bit of an idea. No, you no never idea. know the whole thing. You're never going to know the whole thing. But if you have no fucking idea at all what you're talking about, right? <laughs> Unless you, you look, know, that's guys, when you look at one of these guys' eyes and you see that, or you're in a situation, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Um, somebody's brains blown all over the place, or the fear, or the tension. Just to, uh, uh, you never experienced that, then you don't know nothing. What you are is, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, like we are reading and telling stories. You gotta look into a murderer's eyes, and, and then tell me when you when you. You're scared to avoid it from you and shit your keep doing it. And keep doing it. You know, keep doing it. You know, uh, week after week, month after month, year after year. I see something really, really interesting in your in your story, Frank, that really jumped out at me. 
because I have the same, right? It's well documented, you know, my story. Some people are seeing it all over the press here and, you know, all over the place as well, right? You know, there's some stuff going on about my history and that, and books and different stuff, the film coming out, a documentary. But apart from all that, one of the things was where it says that when you was young, you see your first guy or person killed in front of you when you were six. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, Bill Maxwell killed. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Basically, Joe, Joe Maggs was a, a, a gallo with Joey and Larry. He was, uh, and I assume all the time, you, you know, as a young boy. And uh, I was, we were on 4th Avenue Atlantic in Brooklyn, Atlantic Avenue, I'm sorry, 4th Avenue in Union Street in Brooklyn. I was coming out of the house with my mother. We were on a corner. I see Joe Maggs across the street in front of a diner. And he started arguing with another guy, two other guys. And, 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 uh, Within seconds, I heard, you know, two big bangs, and you saw them drop. And I, we just, I just stood there watching. My mother grabbed me and, you know, shuffled me away. And uh, basically, no, I wasn't taken back. I, it, it was Cowboys Indian stuff, you know. So you, you real is it real? It wasn't real? Is it? it wasn't? You know, you, it, yeah, it doesn't seem real. It was, you know. I saw afterwards everybody was, you know, hurt and, and, and you know, a lot of people crying and stuff afterwards. Uh, but did it affect me? No, even when I got old, it didn't affect me because it is what it is, you know. It didn't affect me then. I'm not, I don't want to, 20 years later, I go see a psychiatrist. Or, I didn't give a shit then. I don't care now. You know what I mean? Um, uh, that's about it. He was a young guy with the gallows that, you know, hot headed and, you know, he leaped before he, he thought, and then he, he wanted to get killed in the streets. That's basically. That's interesting, uh, Frank. I'll tell you why. Because I see a guy killed in front of me when I was seven. I'm just a year older. When I was in Belfast, because I was born in the UK, but taken over there when I was six months, six months born babies. I come back, you know, to London, East London, you know, when I was nine, right? Well, when I was over there and I was seven in the middle of the war over there, there was the, the war, like the, the bombing, the, you know, the guns and all that, the riots over there. I got stuck in a riot, you know, and there was one of them guys, you know, he had a gun and all that. The army shot him. So he died, you know, now looking back, you know, he was only kind of in more than uh, 20, 21, this guy then. I was seven. But he actually died in front of me, Frank. I was behind this hedge because I couldn't move because of, the suppression fire, you know, was up and down the road. Anyone move, they, you know, they die on that road that day. So I was stuck, you know, and I had to watch this guy die, call, call him for his mother. And 20 minutes I was there. So this is, you know, this is documented. Yeah. That was traumatic for me in the way I was stuck there, all right? It wasn't like you <laughs> see that happen, you think, did it happen? God, that's shocking. It did, it didn't. And this kind of, you you know, you're kind of removed. I couldn't go nowhere, Frank. I right. was stuck there. Yeah. So I had a different thing. And you know what? Look, you know, I mean, I went on, I, you know, I caused a blazing trail after that. I was angry, right? I was really angry and all sorts of stuff happened, to, you know, and that. But, but um, I didn't even speak of that until seven years ago in any great detail. I'm just saying it's funny how this stuff can translate in us as human beings, right? Sure, definitely. You know, I, you know, I was around a lot of guys that got shot or killed. So it's, you know, it does affect you. But I was taught in the head, you know, in, in my head that it's business. Mm. So yeah. it takes away the, the, you know, the oomph of your heart in, in, in certain ways. Uh, it's business, you know, and I had to, and I had yeah. to instill that in my head. Well, I wouldn't understand what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? So, uh, I mean, God, you know, I mean, it's just funny how that paradox is as I'm thinking because soon after that on the journey, don't forget I'm seven, I got so dehumanized seeing these people like, die in front of me after. 100%. I was, I was an empty fucking shell. Yeah. Really. And I had to reverse engineer myself as a human being, um, yeah. uh, Frank, you know, really. Definitely. Come back to being a human being. I mean, that was the that was the first thing. So it, it's just you know, I found that fascinating and a synergy, you know, in our two stories certainly. 
look, you know, um, thank, thanks for taking time out of your day today in Brooklyn. How is Brooklyn today? Brooklyn's pretty nice. I'm going to go outside and have a cigar. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice out today. Yeah. It is here too. It is here too. A little cold, but nice, you know. So, look, Frank uh, Di Matteo, I want to thank you, really thank you for coming on, you know, discussing uh, some of them old guys, the iconic guys, your experiences with them, you know, your thoughts, your view on a lot of different stuff. And uh, really, thanks, thanks for coming on, Frank. Send them to my website. Yeah, what is your website, you know, in your books? Uh, yeah, website's uh, mobcandymag.com. You get all of my books, all the magazines, you know, everything I have on the website. Photos, nice pictures of beautiful girls, nice stuff. Everything you want is there. Mobcandymag.com. There you go, guys. Uh, I advise you go in there. This is a real guy, you, you know, real stuff, iconic. Historic stuff back in the days. He's got unbelievable tales to tell. We've only we've only just scratched the surface. You know, I know that I know you're a wonderful, wonderful writer as well, Frank. And Thank again, you. thanks for coming on the big shift. Thank you, Stephen. Keep in touch. I'm here, man. Thanks for tuning in, guys, to a wonderful new segment of the Big Shift with Stephen Gillen. Make sure to subscribe, like, go into StephenGillen.com and sign up for more wonderful content to expedite, help, and support you on your own personal journey of success.